Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another GAMP4 video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the latest release of GAMP4 Bremsstrahlung version 0.4.0 Alpha 1. So the biggest change with this release is we added analysis to the project. So now at the end of each run, GAMP4 creates a file with our output data. So I figure I'll show you guys how to compile this on your own machine just because for now it's not set up on Docker or anything. So first things first, you go to the release page right here, go down to the bottom and right here, you can download the source code zip or the tar GZ um, source code file. So here I have downloaded the zip file, the source code, and then you're just gonna extract it. And then here's my extracted source code. Click on this, click on that. And then here's the project right here. Now I'm going to open up the CMake GUI and we can take this CMake lists file and drag it right into the GUI like this. And then here it says where to build the binaries. We're going to specify a directory called build just so that way it organizes the folder a little better and doesn't throw a bunch of build files in the source directory. So I'll click configure and then it's asking me if I want to create that build directory. I'm going to say yes. It's asking me what generator I'm gonna use Visual Studio. So I'll click finish. Awesome guys. So it looks like it filled out all the data correctly here. And if you have Jamf4 on your own computer, this should work. If not, you might have to mess with some settings and stuff. But just to make these all turn white instead of red, I'm gonna click configure again, and then I'll click generate and then open project. All right guys, so when I clicked open project, it opened Visual Studio. So I can go here on the right side in our Solution Explorer, and I'm going to right-click on G4 Brems right here and click Build. And this shouldn't take too long, but it might take a couple minutes. It's building the executable file. Awesome, guys. So it took 23 seconds to build, and it's going to say 2 succeeded if everything worked out correctly. Now I can exit out of Visual Studio, exit out of CMake, and here click again on this directory, we have a new folder called build. So click on here and then we click on release. And here we have our files. So let's demonstrate this new release in action. So I'm gonna double click on this executable file. All right, I like to keep the GUI on the left and the terminal on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and run, to start here, I'll run the test run Mac file. So double click on that. Awesome, guys. So that ran a thousand particles for us. And here in the console, it doesn't print out the energies anymore. The reason why is because now it's putting all that stuff into our output file. So now that this run is finished, I can actually exit out of here. And here in the release folder, we have a new file generated called ntuples. So this file is a root data file. So it's a dot root file. So right now for the data analysis for G4 Brems, we're using root, which is CERN's data analysis framework. Now root is pretty cool. In fact, the Higgs boson was found with root. So that's really what caught my attention about root. I really wanted to learn how to use it. So that's why we're using it for G4 Brems. So if you wanna use this release of G4 Brems, you're gonna to need to install root. And it's a lot simpler to install than GAMP4. In fact, you just install one executable, and if you just have that executable on your machine, it should be able to run any .root file. In the future, I want to have support for different output file types. CSV is an option. There's XML. Jamf4 has several options for analysis file types, but for now, we're just sticking with root. But let's just double click on this and see what happens. All right, so it pops up a browser window. We're going to click over here. Go down here, and now we have four options of things we can look at. Energy, position X, position Y, and position Z. So let's just click on energy for now. Double click. And here we see a nice histogram of the energy. So this is showing us the energy distribution of all the particles that were shot in that run, which is pretty cool. So here on the x-axis is energy in the units of MeV. And for now, it's not labeled, which I want to fix later. And here on the y-axis is how many particles. 
And it's nice because root shows us the mean and the standard deviation over here. So that's some really good information for us. We can also check out the position X, position Y, and position Z histogram. So I'll click on the position X right now. And here we see that as far as X goes, it was almost centered. Let's see, the mean is about 1.181. I'm assuming this is centimeters, but again, it doesn't have units on here, which is a little frustrating. I'll have to figure out how to put units on the axes. But the same idea, X axis is distance, probably centimeters, maybe millimeters. And then the y-axis is amount of particles. Let's look at the position y, kind of similar idea. And then we look at position z. So this is showing how deep those particles penetrated inside that detector. So that was cool and all, but let's try getting some more data so we get a more accurate graph. So I have two more Mac files in this release. One of them is called medium run, and the other one's called accurate run. There's medium run, which shoots 10 million particles, and it doesn't take that long. It takes about a minute or so. And then there's accurate run. Accurate run shoots out 4 billion particles. And this one is going to take a couple hours. I haven't tested it yet, but it should be the most accurate out of all of these. So let's try a medium run. I would recommend not using visualization with anything besides this test run. So the way to run medium run is we need to open this folder in terminal. And then we need to run this command dot backslash g4 rems medium run dot back. Press enter. Now we just have to wait for 30 seconds to a minute for it to finish running all those particles. Awesome, guys. So it took one to two minutes, I'd say. And as you can see, it finished. So we can exit out of this, refresh our directory, and let's try running our new root file. Double click on this. Let's go back to our graphs and let's look at energy. Double click. Awesome. So check this out, guys. So our maximum point right here is around 120,000 particles that had around, looks like a little less than half of the MEV. And then as you can see, our mean is here at 1.2 MEV and our standard deviation is 1.112. So this is a little bit more of an accurate graph of the photon energy distribution. And then same with the position ones, they're a little bit more rounded off. They're giving us more of an idea of the trend here. And the position X and position Y are almost identical now. Position Z, again, is showing us how deep the particles penetrated. So in a future video, I need to cross-reference this data with some actual graphs. Here's an example of one, and I still need to analyze this better because I'm not sure if this is telling us the same thing as what this one's telling us. But from all the graphs I've seen about photon energy distributions with Bremsterlung, they kind of have this shape of having a big peak here near the lower energies and then this very slow drop off near the higher energies. So I think I'm safe to say this is probably accurate, but in the near future, I need to cross-reference other people's work to make sure this is some accurate data we're generating here. So now it's time to look over the code and see some of the changes I made since the last release. So the first thing you'll probably notice here is that the hit class is gone. Other than that, there's no new files here. I just added some code to some of our existing files. But let me explain why I decided to delete the hit class. So to explain how I got analysis working in this project and why I deleted my hit class, I need to kind of draw a picture and show you guys how the GNT4 system works. So GNT4 has a couple options for actions. There's run action and there's event action. So run action is the biggest unit of action. So basically one run would be from start all the way to finish. This is one run. And inside this run, we have several events. So inside one run, we can have several events happening. So let me draw it this way. In my project, I have over here the run action class. We have the method begin of run action, and we have an end of run action over here. In between the beginning and the ending of a run, several events are going to happen. And one thing about GNT4 is that it's multi-threaded. So all these events can happen simultaneously on different cores on your machine. So it's pretty cool how it works because it makes it go way faster. Imagine if you just had to do all these events in order. So you'd shoot one particle, wait for it to finish, 
then start another one. We'd be waiting for so long, just waiting for the simulation to end. So it's really nice that GNT4 has this multi-threading ability. So it's going to shoot tons of events all at the same time. So in G4Brems version 0.3.0, I implemented a hit class. And during one event, if by chance the particle hits the detector, I created a new hit. Then at the end of the run, if there was a hit created, I had a hits collection class. So in this hits collection class, all the hits got sent over here and stored. So let's say there was another run that ended up with a hit, you get to the end, and it goes store itself in the hits collection. So the reason why I chose to go with this organization is because I assumed that the GANT4 analysis manager, the way that GANT4 handled analysis, I assumed that it would want to give it a list of hits. I was going to give the analysis manager this list, and I wanted it to create me a bunch of histograms, a bunch of data, all that stuff. Well, turns out that GANT4 has a much faster, more efficient, and easier way to do analysis. So GANT4 comes with a really nice feature called the Analysis Manager Singleton. So what is a singleton? Well, in C++ and programming in general, a singleton is a class that's accessible by any class at any time during the application's run. So there's pros and cons to having a singleton class. One con would be if you want your program to be modular, like a lot of people do, a singleton kind of ruins that perspective because any program can access the singleton at any time. But for Jant4, I really like this feature because instead of having to create this hits collection down here and store all the hits together, I can actually grab hits from anywhere I want in the program at any time. So now this is the new organization of G4 Brems. So first we create the analysis manager singleton here in the run action constructor. Once we have it created, it's accessible to anyone in the whole program. So it kind of goes up here above everything. So at the beginning of the run action, we're going to open a file and this is going to be our output file. Then during the run, as I explained, we have several events. Some of them don't hit the detector, some of them do. But if one event ends up hitting the detector, instead of creating a hit class or whatever, all we have to do is send the energy and the position into this analysis manager. Then we don't even have to worry about this particle anymore. We can just stop keeping track of it. Then at the end of the run, we're going to write all of the information to the file, and then we close that file. So now let's look at the code and show you guys where I coded all this logic in. All right, guys, so let's start out in the run action source file here. Jant4 documentation recommends that you create your analysis manager here in the run action constructor. So to create an analysis manager, you use this to access it. So this line right here is going to be used all over the place. This is how we access that singleton. We do the G4 analysis manager instance. Then to create our settings for our analysis manager, we need to do some default settings. So I did the file type to be root. Um, I set n-tuple merging to true. To explain this a little bit, throughout the run, a lot of different threads are going to create data. And at the end of the run, you want them all to merge into one file. Verbose level in Jant4 is just how much it's going to display on the console. So for debugging purposes, I put this to one. And finally, we set the file name to n-tuples. So if you're not familiar with what an n-tuple is, it's basically just a list. So I picture like curly brackets, and then you have entry one, entry two, et cetera, all the way until you get to entry n. So the reason why it's called an n-tuple is because you can make it as long as you want. So here is where we actually create our analysis object. So here we create a new end tuple in our analysis manager. The name of it is G4 Brems and the title is hits. Now inside this end tuple, we're gonna create some columns. So the first column is gonna be energy. Second column is position X, then the next one's Y and the next one's Z. So picture like a list with the first entry being energy, second entry is position X, then Y, then Z. One more thing about end tuples is you can make columns for different data types. So the ones that GNT4 has supported right now are double, integer, string, and float. 
So you can have a, a list with a string as the first entry, a float as the second one, double as the third. But for me, I just had them all be doubles because they're all accurate values. And then finally, we finished this end tuple to create this framework where we're going to store all our data. So now that we've created this end tuple here, we can access it wherever we want in the application. So let's just finish up the run action class real quick. Here in begin of run action, again, we access this analysis manager, and then we're going to open file. Then at the end of run action, we access it again, write all the data from that end tuple data structure into that file, and then we close the file. So let's look at where we start adding the data to the analysis manager. And that's actually found in our event action class. So everything's pretty similar, but if you go down here to end of event action, instead of creating a hit class, what we're doing is we're accessing that analysis manager again, and we're going to fill up the column corresponding to the certain data type with the value. So for example, the energy is found on column zero. So in the zeroth column, we're going to add the energy in there. And then at the end, we just have to add another row so that next time we add something, it's on the next row and it doesn't overwrite the previous row. All right, guys, to finish up this video, I'm gonna show you guys the changes that were made to the action initialization class. So a big change here is the event action no longer needs the run action in the constructor, which is really nice. Beforehand, we needed to merge the run action and event action just so we could send over the hits from the event action to the run action. But now we don't have any dependency between them at all. So the run action and the event action are separate which is a lot better for that modular structure that we like in programming. And then if you notice down here, we have a new method here in action initialization called build for master. Now beforehand, I kind of ignored this build for master method because I didn't understand what it was doing. And it seemed to work fine with only using the build method, but action initialization does have these two methods to override build and build for master. And my analysis actually didn't work without this build for master function. So what is this actually doing? Well, if you go to the Jamf4 documentation, it says that build for master should be used only for defining user run action for the master thread. So the way I understand this is Jamf4 is multi-threaded. So there's tons of threads doing a lot of tasks simultaneously, but there needs to be one master thread, which is like the best thread and that's where our run action needs to be. So I tried this without this method. And basically what happens is the analysis manager creates like 15 output files and it can't merge them because there's no master thread to merge them to. They don't know which one to merge it to. So they just spit out all the files into the folder. That's how it makes sense in my brain. I might be wrong on this. So if you understand more about this build for master function, I'd appreciate a comment or message me and let me know. All right, guys, that's it for this release, Jant 4 version 0.4.0 alpha 1. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment or a like or subscribe. And please consider supporting me by clicking one of those links down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.